Welcome to the Flipping and Wholesaling Houses in New York show. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. So it's funny, I just had a question that came through, and it's almost the same question that somebody who was in my office earlier asked me. And that question is really, what is better? Is it better to fix and flip the house, or is it to wholesale the house? And as as the answers to many of the questions I get are, it really depends, and let me explain. In general, a guy who's going to end up fixing and flipping a house is probably going to make more profit than the guy who wholesaled the house to them. Almost every house I've wholesaled to anyone, that person's made more money than I did. But you have to analyze what you want to do. So I was a fix and flipper for the first four years I did this. So 2017, 18, 19, no, I'm sorry, sorry, 2013, 14, 15, and 16. I went to the auctions every single Tuesday in Nassau County. I bought properties at the auctions. I bought properties on online auctions. I bought from REO uh, agents. That's a bank-owned property. Um, Sorry. And um, I got renovated every house. I didn't understand what a wholesaler was. I thought wholesalers were Neanderthals. I thought they was a ridiculous concept. They're not adding any value. And... After four years of that, about six, six years ago, I changed my opinion. Now, personally, the parts of the business that I could not stand are dealing with contractors and dealing with building departments. I hate that part of the business. I can openly say that, right? I know it. I can do it. But I hate that. I hate finding contractors. I hate dealing with contractors. I hate contractors lying to you. Um, I hate juggling different contractors. Uh I hate dealing with building departments, trying to get away with things when they don't see it. They find you. They uh, Certain times you need to order, order permits anyway. Dealing with certain building departments is a nightmare. Nightmare uh, does not make any sense. You're dealing with government, not people who, there's, who use any logic. Those are the parts of the business that I hated. Um, and I think if you want to scale a business and grow a business, it's very hard to grow a business that's fixing and flipping a lot of properties, at least in my area, right, in Long Island. Sorry, I'm getting the 5 million texts. Um, But wholesaling is a more manageable business. Now, there's pros and cons to both, right? And I have students who do both. I have a student that only wants to flip. I found him a a deal. He did deal, got a deal, made 50 grand on the flip, 60 grand on the flip. Just he finished, has a second flip for sale now, starting a third. He has a full-time job. He basically runs that business on the weekend. And um, that's what he wants to do. Um, and I got tons of students who are all wholesaling, not interested in closing on a deal, just want to make the quick, quicker money. Um, it, it really depends on what you want, right? The advantage of wholesaling is that you can grow the business, but you don't need a lot of, you don't need that much capital to do it. The advantage of fixing and flipping is probably easier. It's just that you have to deal with contractors and you got to deal with building departments. There is no right or wrong answer. So the question I got specifically, I'm going to read it now. Is it easier to spend money marketing directly to sellers to wholesale to make a six-figure income or buy one property from a wholesaler to flip and repeat for two or three flips a year to make an income? Or should I say what's more profitable and which is easier to make money? Now, obviously, I don't I don't know which is going to be more profitable, right? Um, if you want to start right out the gate, buying a property from a wholesaler is going to be a hell of a lot easier than starting the process of marketing and going through, you know, buying a list and skip tracing the list and then dealing with a ton of rejection to get a deal, which, you, you know, if you start marketing to wholesale, I wouldn't count on getting a dollar from it in a year or two, a year or a year and a half, 12 to 18 months. If you're going to flip a property, you know, you, hopefully you're going to finish it in six months and hopefully you get paid within nine months. It's quicker. It's probably easier. But that assumes a lot, right? It assumes that your estimates on how much it was going to cost are relatively, relatively on target. And it assumes your estimate of what you're going to sell it for is on target. And the market shifts. market's shifting now towards the downside. And sometimes you think you know what it's going to cost and you didn't realize that there was a huge huge expense that you didn't count on. That does happen. It happens often enough that it's something you need to understand. Much more risk when you buy the property. Also, you're going to need probably $100,000 in capital. right? How do I come up with that number? Let's say you're buying a property. For, let's just say you're buying a property for three hundred thousand dollars. Good deal. In most parts of the of the of the, of the, war, of the area we work in, 
Three hundred thousand. Your first flip, you're probably not going to get ninety percent. You're probably going to get eighty percent. That means you have to come up with sixty grand just for the down payment. You have to come up with ten thousand dollars in closing costs at seventy, and then the other thirty you're going to need to start the contractor off. Even though you're going to get paid, get, you're going to get paid. You're going to be reimbursed by the hard money lender that's giving you eighty percent of the purchase price and a hundred percent of the of the construction work. You still have to front some money to the contractor, and you have to make monthly payments. It's 100 grand, easy, easy. And that's 300,000. If it's more, you might need more. So you need capital. It doesn't have to be your capital. You can borrow it from somebody else. You need capital. You're taking risk, especially if you're borrowing money, you're taking even more risk. Um, you're personally guaranteeing. If the deal goes bad, it's on you. Um, there's risk. Is it easier? If, if you ask me, it's probably easier. It's probably easier. It's easier to get from point A to point B. But, and there's more money in it. But, how many can you really do? Two a year? Right? If you're wholesaling and you get a good pipeline going, you could do, you know, you can grow to four or five deals a month. It's not impossible, right? You're gonna need a team, but you can certainly do a deal a month yourself. So, you know, and you can wholesale a deal and you can make thirty grand, and you can flip a deal and make fifty grand. It was a lot easier to wholesale it. So every single deal is different. Every single deal. There's no hard and fast rule, Benny B, as to what's easier or what's more profitable. It's just impossible to determine, right? I've had, put it this way for me, any deal that I wholesale, if I can't close, if I can't find a buyer for it, I know I can close on it and flip it, right? So you have to be confident enough in your pricing that that's where you are. But I really don't like closing on deals. I have right now, where's it, two, four, six, nine deals that I closed on where I'm evicting tenants and I got a, a lot of money sitting in them. It's not so easy, right? Your cash flow becomes a problem. And cash flow very often becomes a problem when you're flipping, right? Because you estimated X for for the for the construction escrow. The lender agreed to give you X, and then it's X plus twenty thousand dollars because something new came up. You're gonna have to lay out that twenty thousand dollars. I mean, your lender might give you more. They might not, right? Depend. They, right? Hard money lenders are bound by loan to cost right they want you to put up a minimum of 10 percent if you're new maybe 20 or 30 percent um and they're also bound by a certain percentage of arv the after repaired value right some are 65 percent of after arv some are 70 some are 75 but um you're bound by that so they're going to lend you more just because you say hey i didn't know about the foundation issue that i had to fix yeah well they don't care you have to come up with that cash somehow and you still got to make monthly payments these are the things that happen all the time i get calls from flippers all the time they're stuck mid-construction I ran out of money. Happens all the time. I can't tell you how many times it happens. That's a big risk. That can kill that can kill your whole deal, right? If you're stuck with no cash, it's a big problem. Wholesaling, you need money for marketing, but that's about it. So there is no right or wrong answer here. It depends on what you like, right? More, I mean, the, the gurus all tell you you should start wholesaling, then you get into flipping, then you buy rental properties, then you make $10 million a month sitting on a beach, right? That's a lot of bullshit, but most people start with wholesaling and then go to fix and flipping. I did. I went the other way around, and um, I know plenty of people that went the other way way around too, um, because it's hard to, when you're trying to grow a business when you're fixing something. Every single project is different. Every contractor is a pain in the ass. Um, every building department by us is you know is a bigger hassle. Depends where you can avoid certain buildings. I know people that won't buy it. I know a lot of people that won't buy in the town of North Hempstead. Makes perfect sense. It's the worst building department that ever, ever existed. Almost impossible to... When you describe how inefficient they are, it's, people don't even believe it. Real easy to look. You can look up, uh, pick up a, a spot in North North uh, Hempstead, <coughs> and you'll see properties that were in contract for three years. And there's a bunch of them. And you're like, what is that about? Two years, three years, that doesn't happen. It happens because somebody went to contract and could wait, and there was some open issue, and it took two or three years to clear up because that's how long things take there. It is a disaster of the of the highest proportions, and I know many people who won't buy in it just for that reason. And it's hurting the town of North Hempstead now. The town of North Hempstead has some of the nicest areas in the world, right? Beautiful high-end areas, gorgeous, Mutton Town, Lanning Town, Oh, there's so many beautiful areas, great, beautiful areas in town of North Hempstead. But a lot of those really good areas are in their own incorporated villages. And I'm not a fan of the incorporated village, but if I was in the town of North Hempstead, I'd want to incorporate it into a village right away so I don't have to deal with their building department. Um, so 
you know, if you don't mind dealing with building departments and contractors, you're probably, if you swear, willing to start off, you might be better off starting to flip, but it's not, it's not apples to apples. It's apples to oranges. It's just a different way of going about it. I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to how to flip new york.com if you're interested in finding out more about one-on-one coaching i offer go to coaching dot how to flip new york.com if you're interested in a study at home course that te- uh, where i teach how to do what i do go to how to flip new york course.com we're changing that soon um what else if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any media channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes really help the algorithm. A lot more people are seeing my videos because you have been liking them, so thank you. And please keep the comments coming. I post five times a week. I don't always know what to say. Your comments give me topics to discuss, so I really appreciate it. Um, any comments fine does not have to be about the video you're watching. It can be about anything. I try to respond to all comments within a day or two or three. Um, um, if, it's a, if it's a simple answer, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something I've covered recently, I'll send you links to a video or videos on it, and if it's something new, I'll do a brand new video on it. So thank you very, very much for watching.